Alright, welcome. This is MDog from MDog Gaming, and we are taking a look at MLB The Show 2017. Haven't been able to put up as many videos lately, also haven't been able to stream quite as much, just have been really busy with work. We had a vacation where I was gone for a week, and then coming back, getting back into work life. And so, uh, just had a little bit of time here to just scratch out um, both doing a short stream, playing some baseball, then also wanted to just be intentional here and talk about this baseball game we've been playing, MLB 2017. Of course, MLB The Show 2017. Uh, it's a game I've never had before. I've always kind of heard it's the uh, clear number one baseball game on the market and has been for a while, I think to the point where there really aren't any other AAA games that I know of major league baseball games that are left there's some uh some single a if you will but uh this may be the only triple a one but um so but this is the first time i've ever owned it uh and there's lots of reasons for that one thing i just want to talk about for this video though is uh the the game mode called road to the show and that's what we're looking at here I want to describe it a little bit and just kind of try to sell you on why this game mode has single-handedly gotten me back into a sports game when honestly it's just been years since I've been really into a sports game. That doesn't mean I haven't played some of the recent Maddens here and there or played an NBA game uh, or even FIFA, but but not played them very much. And so this is Road to the Show where you actually create a player. Uh, in this case, we have created a third baseman his secondary position is outfield, but primarily he plays third base. His name is Boomer Duke. And uh, what you do is you start off going through the process of getting drafted and working your way up through the minors and eventually, hopefully, making it to a major league team. You are only in control of things that directly impact your player. So if you are an everyday player, you'll bat when it's your turn to bat. But you'll only field when there's going to be a play, a significant play that where the ball could come to you or where you're going to, your services are going to be required. So it definitely speeds up the process of playing through baseball, baseball games, of course. Uh, the one caveat to this, if you're going to be a starting pitcher, um, you will spend a lot more time in a game because you're, of course, in control of the pitching. Uh, however, if you're a starting pitcher, you only play what, every, once every four or five games. So that helps uh, as well. All that being said, I want to kind of jump in just to let you know where Boomer Duke is. This is a freshly created character. The only thing he has done at this point is he has uh, gone through some batting practice and uh, done some running and some fielding for the scouts. And then this is our second, so our second of two showcase games, which is um, the last thing you do sort of leading up to the draft where you find out what organization will be offering you that um, that very meager first contract that you'll get uh, the thing that I think I enjoy most about MLB this besides kind of the role playing League element of just playing a single character is it will be the show has decided to present it in almost like a documentary format so you'll have these moments where the your character, whoever you are playing, will be seen talking on his phone or walking into his manager's office or different things such as that, talking to the press after a game. And they're just these moments where they're and they're narrated. It sounds like it, it really has the feeling of like, oh, you're watching a sports documentary. And then you make these conversational choices that do impact your career, such as, let's say you're, you, you're talking to your agent and you're telling your agent, hey, I really want to get traded. I'm not happy here. Well, your agent will start working on that, working on that process. So uh, it does impact your conversational choices, your decisions do impact eventually what could happen to you in your career, although most of them are not immediate impacts. As we see, Boomer Duke is playing third base, and we're going to try to throw this guy out who tried to bunt out of nowhere. Um, and I think it's that documentary chill style that just really jives with, like, baseball being a grinded out sport um i don't know i just have really i like it. it i like on one hand that the way 
you just play the plays that involve your player, uh, how that impacts you, and yet at the same time, so that's kind of moving things along more quickly, but at the same time, it still has that feel of it's a long season, uh, and then, you know, every maybe half season or so, something new is going to happen that's kind of going to update your career where this sort of documentary style presentation will take over. And I just really, really have gotten into that. So here we are. We're, this is our first at bat. And this is the first time I've created a character who actually is a switch hitter. I'm not sure if I like it. I've played so much as a right-handed batter. It actually is kind of throwing me off to be standing on the left side of the plate. I think if I got used to it, of course, it would probably be good because you're always going to have that sort of larger view of the pitches coming at you. Uh, and perhaps because I'm running my mouth so much, I've actually been able to have some pretty good discipline here in holding off these balls. I'm really terrible at uh, just wanting to wanting to always swing early and try to get a count, but you are rewarded with additional training points if you do take some early balls or extend the pitch count of your of your opposing pitcher. So um, I'll try to focus in here. So on a three to one, it's very likely we're going to get a, a hittable pitch. Unless it's an obvious ball, we're going to be swinging away here. Ready on three and one, here's the pitch. All right, it did go end up being a little low, that cutter did. So now we're full count. I mentioned the training points you get as uh, as I need to sort of prepare for this 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 at bat right now. Let me do this, and then I'll talk about training. Yeah, it's a good pitch. All right, so um, the training or, again, sort of the role-playing elements, you're getting rewarded or sometimes penalized for how you're playing. And those points, those training points you build up, you are deciding sort of how you invest those points into your player. You can think of it as in, you know, these are the areas of your game that you're practicing on, you're improving in. And uh, if I had reacted the exact correct way there, possible I could have gotten it. One thing you, you will notice when you first start out as a baby player, brand new player like this, is most of your stats are really low. So, like, hitting is very challenging at this point in my career. Um, on one hand, the competition isn't as good as it will be down the road. Um, so that balances out a little bit. But we're just, you know, we don't have any points in speed. Now, there's my typical swing there, swinging at something that could not have been farther from the strike zone. So until you put some points in speed or put some points in batting or fielding or uh, your reaction time, I mean, some of those things, it, it is, you know, you definitely feel it early in the career where later that was a good pitch to hit. We'll, we'll see here if we got good contact. Because one thing you do, yeah, so solid contact. So I got training points even though that was a routine, you know, ground out, not a successful at bat. We at least did swing at an appropriate time, made good to contact. So we're going to get rewarded at least a small amount for that to put back into our player. So we're already in the top of the fifth. If you notice the score, our team is winning by one run. Wow. That's going to be a fielding error there. As uh, again, stats are low, so sometimes you just, we you know, we just drop the ball there. But uh, we're coming up. We're 0 for 2. Our last at bat, we had a strikeout. No, we had a strikeout in the. That said, strikeout in the fourth. I don't think that's accurate. Didn't we just ground out? Anyway, so now you see the score is 5 to 5. We're in the bottom of the six now, so the game just moves along at a really nice pace. Um, and if you mix in maybe simulating a series here or there once you get on the major league level at least and you're facing 162 games it's really not that overwhelming to go through a season you know you can do it in you know even if you didn't play that much you can get through a whole season in a week easy just playing some each day uh, or if you play a lot big chunks of time you can get through a season in a day or two again kind of mixing in maybe some simulating here or there but playing most of your playing most of your games so I, again i really like the pace of it um, but what we're working towards here is we're having trying to have a decent showing which so far we really haven't we've had a fielding error nothing to speak of at the, at the plate um but after this one way or another we're going to be drafted uh and i don't know i guess i think there is some rhyme and reason to when you get drafted based on how well you do in these games and in the workouts
two and two count. Um, but it does kind of feel like there's maybe some randomness to it as well. As we finally break through and get a base hit, we're going to hold up there, of course, but get a single into right field, and that's helpful both for our team trying to keep this inning alive and so that we don't have a he's going to see his stock rise and keep rising. A complete uh, disappointment in our first in our uh, in our last showtime game here. So now we're on base, so we are taking over base running duties because it involves our player. Old Boomer is going to get a lead here. There's only one out, so we're not going to get too aggressive. He now walks and loads the bases. Uh, there's a lot that's great about this game. I really am wanting to pretty, pretty much just stay focused on the road to the show game mode, though. I mean, I will say in general, I think the graphics are great. The gameplay, I think, is uh, is really good. Uh-oh. I don't think he's going to get a double play there. All right, let's going to hold up at third. Um, there's just a lot to like about this game. If, you're, if you like baseball at all, and on top of that, enjoy the idea of being able to sort of role play. And I know this game's been out for a little while now. I wasn't exactly like a day one purchaser of this game. But once I saw the reviews and looked into it a little bit more and saw this game mode, this road to the show game mode, which of course is just one of many game modes, but this is the one that interests me. I decided to dip my toes in and I am thankful I have, um, even though I haven't had a whole lot of time to game recently, this has kept me um, entertained and it's given me something that I feel like I could just kind of come do for a little while. That was very close to a grand slam right at the short warning track there. So we have a one point lead as we now will likely be back in the field. Oh no, we're back up to bat. So none of the plays in the last couple innings apparently involved us. It's back a tied game, 6-6. Six to six. Uh, man on first, no outs. Here's the first pitch to him. Given our low statistics, I think you, you could make an argument here for us just trying to bunt the man over with no outs, but um, I think we're going to swing away. Catcher's probably going to still get us here. Yeah. Again, we just have no speed right now. Well, this one had its moments Learning from um, in the end, these guys um, games like, I don't know, Call of Duty and other games, there's also a really cool perk system where once you have enough statistics in a certain category, you can actually activate perks that have to do with that. So, like, if you want to be a power hitter and you put a lot of your training points, which we'll take a look at training points here shortly, but if you put a lot of your training points into, uh, let's say, power hitting against right-handed pitchers, once you get up to, I think the first one may be at, like, 65 or 75 or something like that, once you get pretty high rating in that category you can activate what are called these perks some of them are passive and some of them are active but they're like they're really cool they're thoughtful pretty cool perks and they're things that do influence the active ones pretty much just influence one at bat or one fielding play the passives impact the entire game you have it activated and then those will also integrate with your Showcases showtime points, which we'll talk about in a moment. Up. All attention turns to the imminent main event. The so here, MLB draft. here's the documentary style portion of this that I've that I've been mentioning. So you see what they're saying. So you know you hear the documentary style voiceover, and then your advisor. We don't have an agent yet. Our advisor says, "Well done. You've done all you can do. I'm proud of you." And then you can either choose to say, hey, an agent approached me after the last game, and that might sort of expedite the process of you getting an agent yourself, but I'm okay. This is my high school baseball coach who's advising me. I'm okay with hanging out with him a little longer as being my advisor. And I'll just say, I guess now we just see what happens at the draft. Long dreams of being a pro ball player will be realized. Young dreamers will stand on edge to find out where will be the first stop on their road to the show. Where are you planning to be when it goes down, he asks me. And I'll say, um, with my family. So now we're at the draft. And uh, so let me talk about, as this draft begins, and we, can, we will hit square here in a minute, just forward, fast forward to where we get picked. But uh, I'm, I don't think, based on where our projections were showing, 
I don't think we're going to be um, early in the draft, but um, we'll see. Um, so the Showtime points, the more perks you have, you can have uh, only have so many perks that adds up to how many Showtime points you have. So usually that means like two or three perks, I think. If you don't have all of your Showtime points used, you can actually use those Showtime points to slow the game down in certain moments. So like if you're trying to steal a base, you can slow the game down to really get a good jump on the pitcher. Or I think you can also use it with um, hitting as well um, and fielding for sure. Sometimes it will automatically activate Showtime and you can make a really good play in the, in the infield or outfield. Um, so you kind of are balancing. I think overall I like having the perks and not really using the Showtime as much. But if you don't have perks yet, or if you like using the Showtime meter, you can uh, always have enough Showtime left to at least use it once or twice during each game. So it's a neat give-and-take system they have there, and it allows you to just kind of feel a little bit more epic with this player that you're, you're role-playing because you can kind of use those to increase your odds of being successful in certain moments of the game. Or you could choose not to use them at all. Um, you also have complete control over the difficulty. Like I've kind of worked up towards like veteran difficulty with hitting. And then you can choose what type of hitting you're doing in terms of analog or digital, like the meter, or just using your stick. Um, so you do control difficulty and all that. All right, so you see we've, we've about gone through the first 12 picks. If we don't get drafted here, we're going to hit square and just go to whoever, whatever team's going to give us. So we're in round two. Let's see what... Uh, With the 30th pick in the second round, the Chicago Cubs select... Boomer Duke. There's Boomer Duke going to the Chicago Cubs. So so this is what's key. Yes, we're going to be in the Chicago Cubs organization. And yes, it's possible within a year or two we could make it up to the big leagues. Uh, although our stats are so low and, and getting used to playing a third baseman, it's also possible it could take me a little longer to work my way up. But what you want to notice is on the right side, you'll see the AAA affiliate and the AA affiliate. So the AA affiliate is Tennessee Smokies, and that's actually right close to home for me uh, within a couple hours. I believe that's the team in Knoxville. Um, although I need to look that up to double check. I do believe that's the case. And their AAA affiliate is actually the Iowa Cubs. So way out in Iowa. So we'll start most likely in the AA affiliates or, uh, program or team, um, hopefully as a starting third baseman so we can get lots of playtime in. And then um, it's very likely, though I think it is maybe feasible to jump over AAA into the big leagues. I think typical path is you go up to AAA for a, for a time and then you at some point will get pulled up to the major league team now that does depend arrives. on the the needs of the major league team like who do they currently have playing third base is there a room for me and so that will sort of dictate when i get pulled up as much as my own success at the lower levels boomer this is the gm of the chicago cubs we just drafted you to come play for us how's that sound sounds great holy cow i'm going to play for the cubs to be honest sir, i was expecting to get picked sooner good i guess i was hoping my favorite team was going to take me or it sounds good we're going to be really enthusiastic Many about playing for the Cubs. My favorite team is the Atlanta Braves. Um, but the chances of you getting chosen by your favorite team obviously are, are uh, somewhat stacked against you. However, you can start asking your agent for trades, once, especially once you become a little more well-known. And then eventually you'll become a free agent and have a little more choice in the matter. Terrific. We're happy we got you. I can't believe it. This is surreal. I'm so glad the wait is over. I just want to place a ball. Best pick you ever made, I promise. Thank you, sir. We'll just be respectful here. Well, we believe in your talent. We're counting on you working hard for us. Welcome to the club. I will work hard. Can't wait to start. Unreal, this is awesome seeing the bigs. Or thanks so much. I won't let you down. I saw someone do the, the training like that batting follow, practice and the stealing. They to got the gold the tire and it rewarded them with 800 training points. Yes, that's correct, and uh, that's a voice coming from my automated voice maker from my stream. Um, Diesel, thank you for the comment. I'm actually just wrapping up what's going to eventually be a YouTube video 
uh, and then I will stream a little longer after that. Um, let me finish this up. So the Cubs sent you an offer sheet, and I'm pretty pleased with where it landed. And I'm going to say, spare the details. If you think it's fair, let's sign. Cases, uh, and yes, Diesel, I have pr participated in those. Um, basically, that, it's like the team will bring in a coach to practice with you individually, or one of your coaches will just practice with you. And if you do well enough, you do get additional training points. That's kind of a cool thing they have. So, um, so we're going to go ahead and sign with the Cubs here. You do have an option if you're not pleased with where you get picked or who picked you. You have an option of going back to college and you get uh, some additional training points and then you go through the whole playing your showcase games and working out for the scouts again. Um, so let's look real quickly at training and perks. For a third baseman, we're going to be uh, putting points into batting and then fielding base running. Of course, if you're playing a pitcher, that's going to be pretty different. Uh, but for the, in, for, the, for the everyday players, this is kind of what you're looking at. So we're going to be wanting to put points in our contact, our power. Um, I don't know, maybe not bunting too much early on. Certainly plate vision, discipline, and batting clutch. Um, batting clutch especially I think is a cool stat because when you do get in those moments that are uh, really important, if you have a higher clutch situation, you're more likely to come through. So uh, the example I was giving you before, you look at the uh, power versus right-handed pitching. If you put a bunch of points into that, if you get to 60, you can activate this perk that gives you a fly ball hitter, guarantee a fly ball if contact is made. So if you activate that perk during the game for that at bat, you're going to be guaranteed a fly ball. This one is a passive. If you get to 85, it's called high altitude. Coors field atmosphere anywhere you play, so your ball is going to just pop more as if you were playing in uh, Colorado at Coors Field every game. Or meatball, if you get up to 95 in rating in power versus right-handed, which that would take a ton of training points because they do become, it becomes more and more points to level them up as you go, you could have for one pitch a uh, right down the middle pitch. So that's how kind of how the training and the um, and the perks system works just briefly. So anyway, I'm going to wrap up where we're putting this this um, this YouTube video at this point. As you can see, we did get on the Tennessee Smokies, which was the double A team. If we check their roster real quick, we can uh, check out to see if we are in fact the highest rated third baseman in double A. Where are we? Yeah. We are not. So this will be interesting. Let's see where... I think it will let me... Um, so let me put my training points in. I'm not going to play another game for this video, but let me just go ahead and put my training points in so we can at least see... Because I'm not sure if it's possible to not start as a as a uh, everyday player in double A, but it may not be. We'll see. It's just never happened to me. Um, all right, we'll just go. We're just going to go right down here. Oh wait, I didn't think about how many points we have. We don't have that many. Um, okay, we'll go against right-handed. We'll just put that in. That's fine for now. We've got 17 points left, but that's not enough to do much with. All right, let's go to play next appearance. A Double A manager addresses his team before their season opener. For many of these young men, it is their first game as a professional. If you can't appreciate opening day at the ballpark, you won't go far in this game. Let's honor the game with our commitment today, win or lose. So that gave us a pep talk. In other words, we're going to get... We are going to get a um, uh, a bonus to the amount of training points we, we can get in this next game for this one game. So there you see we are starting third base. We are batting fifth, actually. So even though there was a double-A guy with a slightly better overall rating than us... Uh, for, for some reason, they have us in the starting lineup from the beginning. So maybe that's just a default thing the game chooses to do. I don't know. Um, it is possible that the other guy, they were slotting into another position. Um, I'm not sure. But 